He was young, handsome, and full of promise. He was cast into the national spotlight in dramatic fashion and mourned for his tragic death. John Fitzgerald Kennedy was born into a wealthy, prominent Irish Catholic family. His family had deep roots in banking, business, and politics. Nicknamed Jack, JFK was the second oldest of nine children, many of whom were trailblazers in their own right. The Kennedy kids were well-educated, and things like swimming and sailing races cultivated a strong, competitive spirit in each of them. But Kennedy was one of those students who struggled to always apply himself. When he did, he excelled and demonstrated moments of brilliance. But those moments were few and far between during his time at elite boarding and prep schools. Nevertheless, he went on to college at Princeton and then transferred to Harvard. He was a mediocre student, but a strong socialite. He had a charismatic personality with a bright smile and a quick laugh. He was charming and handsome and popular. He eventually grew up and took his studies more seriously. On a trip with his ambassador father in 1939, Kennedy wrote his senior thesis on why Britain was unprepared to fight Germany in World War II. It was well researched and provided an articulate and compelling analysis of Britain's weaknesses. When Jack Kennedy graduated in 1940, it was published as the book why England Slept. It would sell more than 80,000 copies. With a Harvard degree and a published book, he now had academic credentials. JFK joined the Navy and served in the South Pacific. After helping fellow sailors get to an island after a Japanese attack on his boat, he was awarded both a Purple Heart and the Navy and Marine Corps Medal for extremely heroic conduct. All of his years of competitive swimming saved not only his life, but his crewmates as well. They swam three and a half miles, with Kennedy towing a badly burned crewman the entire time. He was now a war hero. But the war also brought tremendous loss for the Kennedy family. JFK's older brother, Joe Jr., was killed in action. Joe Jr. was the family's hope and dream for the White House. He checked all the boxes, but his shot down plane set fire to JFK's own ambitions. He decided to claim those hopes and dreams for himself. He now had political ambition. The stage was set for JFK. He'd been prepping for this role his entire life. He had the pedigree, the personality, and the panache. He was elected to the U.S. House of Representatives in 1946. His ambition, though, called him to something even bigger. In 1952, JFK stepped into the political spotlight after winning a seat in the U.S. Senate. He'd served there for eight years. Just after the election, Kennedy met Jackie. They were married in September of 1953. They went on to have three children, Caroline, John Jr., and Patrick, who unfortunately died as an infant. While at home, recovering from back surgery, and with Jackie's encouragement, he penned another book, Profiles in Courage. The book, which told the story of eight different senators who made courageous decisions, won the Pulitzer Prize in 1957. In 1960, Kennedy ran for president with Senate Majority Leader Lyndon B. Johnson as his running mate. The debates with Vice President Richard Nixon were televised for the first time, and this strongly favored Kennedy. He was young, vibrant, and relaxed. Nixon 
was not. Kennedy, on November 8, 1960, was elected the 35th President of the United States. He was just 43 years old. The Kennedys brought a new youthful spirit to the White House. Jackie, at 31, took her role as First Lady seriously. She set to work restoring and preserving the White House, believing it should be a place to celebrate American history, culture, and achievement. They hosted events and welcomed and celebrated the arts. She also made sure it was a family home for her young children. There was a swing set and a treehouse on the lawn of the White House. JFK's short presidency was eventful. Domestically, he inspired a spirit of activism and service, creating the Peace Corps in 1961. His civil rights bill, one of his last acts of his presidency, became the Civil Rights Act in 1964. Internationally, he faced Cold War tensions. There was the Bay of Pigs invasion and the Cuban Missile Crisis. One of his proudest accomplishments was the Nuclear Test Ban Treaty with Great Britain and the Soviet Union, which helped to ease foreign tensions in the summer of 1963. JFK's assassination in Dallas, Texas on November 22, 1963 sent shockwaves through our country. Ask anyone where they were when they heard the news, and the details are vivid. The images, too, are etched in our minds. The smiles and waves during the parade. Jackie's pink suit. A stunned Walter Cronkite taking off his glasses. The hasty and crowded inauguration of LBJ in Air Force One. A bereaved young widow with a young boy saluting his father. JFK's legacy is profound. He's viewed as a visionary politician whose time was cut short. What kind of leader might he have been had he been granted more time? What would the U.S. have been like under his guidance for more of the tumultuous 1960s? In the arena of public opinion, he's beloved and ranks up there with the best of the best. In more recent years, some of his personal choices and stories surrounding compromised morals cloud his idyllic image. Perfect, he was not. But he and his family brought a life and vibrancy to the White House that remains unmatched to this day. And his famous words continue to ring true today, inspiring unselfish thought and action. If not us, who? If not now, when? Ask not what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. Thanks for watching Memory Mountain. If you enjoyed this video, please click to subscribe to our channel and hit that thumbs up button. Be sure to tap the notification bell so you'll be one of the first to know when we post our next story looking back over the landscape of Americana.